The great cricketer is a Twitter stream. It's about playing cricket at the grade level. Boys! Get a few today, did you? To be honest with you, I um, hate grade cricket. <laughs> uh, I went into to play for a team called um, oh, the Lemus Kid. Obviously, sharing is always a big issue, a big issue for, for young kids coming into a senior cricket team. It's taken like a whip league. It's um, a bit of advice for the players yeah. for the one. I refer to the great cricketer here and I'll say, this will do a little bit early. <laughs> Boys! Hello and welcome to the Great Cricketer Podcast. On today's show, everything's happening from the fallout of the India series or the Australian series with India, depending which way your inflection of that sentence goes. We're talking Tim Payne. What happens next? Matt Wade, Travis Head, Warner Watch, the effect of Stark, the effectiveness of Stark in COVID. Hey, Jimmy Anderson's a pretty good bowler outside of England. Apparently, six for 39 off 28 overs. Joe Root, is he back in the big boys? Is he back in the big boys? All of that and more. Of course, Pete Hanscom is on the show. Mm -hmm. Wonderful to speak to Pete. We're talking about facing Boomer, new salad, Tim Payne during the Hurricanes, all sorts of exciting elements. That's all before we get into hashtag AskTGC, where a guy gets bowled by his father in a father-son match and many other interesting questions and developments from that. This is all brought to you by Budgie Smuggler, where you can use the code CHAMP for free shipping. That's Budgie Smuggler. Com. My name is Ian Higgins, and I'm joined by Sam Perry, as ever, and as always. Pezzy lad, how do you feel post-COVID, post, uh, post-Gabba? Uh, Has it sunk in? What are the feelings? What are you A feelings? lot of feelings, sure. yeah. So I, was, yeah I, was, I was paralyzed there. Mm-hmm. It's Australia Day as we go to air. The country hasn't properly dealt with the original sin. So that's my abiding feeling right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Day of morning. You're talking about Adam and day. Eve? Original sin is no. when Eve took the apple from the talking snake. No, I'm talking about the psychopathic choice of this day as our country's <laughs> oh, that. day. Um, and also, hello to our Indian viewers on YouTube who voraciously consumed <laughs> our pain last week. Yeah. Um, tell us how to work those algorithms. Boys! <laughs> I know how, boys. Otherwise, I'm good. Cricket's interesting. There's a lot of interesting... Uh, mm. conversation to get into with this Australian team. Mm. The script has been ripped up. Yeah, They were in the ascendancy. Australia. They were ascending Australia mm-hmm. back to greatness. Now no longer. Mm. Pants by pant. Indeed. So looking forward to ripping in. Hey, um, now – we often have a intro question here just to get the just to get the juices flowing, get the blood, the blood boiling, flowing, the blood flowing, get the blood flowing. Well, well Manscapes also sponsoring this show. We'll speak yeah, about that a little we'll bit later. Now we had something planned, but then something over the last sort of twenty four hours has kicked off on the social media, and we thought, well, this is actually far better to get into. Now, many of you who listen to this show will follow us through social media, and someone who sent in uh, what was his name? His name was Vladimir Pakovsky. <laughs> that was his that was his Twitter handle. Yep. He sent in a clip from, I believe it's, uh, I believe it's Western Australian Premier Cricket. How do you know that? Um, we'll get into, we'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> now that I look, I'm looking at this image right now on Instagram, and uh, there's actually a, the Wacker thumbnail. Okay. In the, I mean the, um, the bug in the corner. Anyway, the question to it is: At Great Cricket, appeal of the century? Question mark. Now, what I'll do is in the edit of this, we'll put up the actual video that's uh, that's, that's that's sort of going around. Uh, on YouTube, but, on yeah. YouTube, but uh, on the YouTubes, but um, but for those listening to the audio, I means Spotify, iTunes, etc. Uh, we're just going to play the audio. You want to we'll say play, we'll play the audio, and obviously it's not perfect because you can't see the images to go with it. But mm. most people listening out there will be very familiar when they close their eyes, listening to the sounds of this, and just hang on for the very end of it for the final cry, <laughs> which will make sense once you play it. Let's have a listen. Go. <laughs> Do it, do it again? Yeah, go again. Oh, do it again. Go again. Do it again. Just, just the end. Right at the end here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so, so listen. Oh, fuck me. I, I reckon a lot of people who are listening to this oh, right now have probably already seen this clip, but, yeah. it, but if you haven't, you, you don't need an explanation. But very quickly, that is the sound of a vociferous appeal, yeah. um, and it's for court behind, which is relevant. We'll get into that. Sure. That the umpire um, turns down, yeah. and uh, the, the appeals continue. And yeah. finally, the bloke from mid-on who has absolutely <laughs> screamed in to throw himself in front of the stumps has actually backslammed himself. <laughs> 
while simultaneously throwing in a final desperate how is that? As though the umpire hadn't <laughs> quite registered the initial <laughs> appeal. Yeah, yeah. And the funny thing. Oh, how is that? You oh. know, <laughs> the way his voice kind of warbles as, yeah. as his there's back little, hits the ground. There's a little vibrato. Little, <laughs> little, 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 little. <laughs> now, you know, and listening to the the uh, the clip again, there's a little giggle from a female voice just afterwards, a bit, a bit imperceptible. If you turn it up, you can hear it as okay. well. It's just at that moment when the team realises they're not going to get the decision. And, uh, I mean, it's hard to <laughs> – there's been a fallout from this as well, hasn't there, he goes? Well, we both kind of remarked about it on social. It's happening – it's happening as <laughs> as we go to air. Yeah. Um, now, what's happened was the guy who's batting, I uh, forget his name. His last name's Batega, I think. I, he's probably listening. I apologise if I got your name mm. wrong. But um, he's just his top comment on Instagram. He yeah. said, for the record, I didn't hit it. Yeah. <laughs> because he's, he's wafted <laughs> outside <laughs> off stump. He's yeah. wafted. And, yeah. and it's not a very... It's not a very definite stroke. It's neither attacking or defending, but sure. that, that doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. He's wafted out, so some. So it's not as though the ball oh, is but it's kind of. Advice, is it? It's not as though the ball is trying to is kind of working its way through bat and pad, and it's all a bit of a scramble. It's yeah. really it's either bat or nothing. He's either hit it or he hasn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it turns out he hasn't. Yeah. Now that's what's happened is now underneath not not underneath that comment, but there's other replies to the to the post. This yeah. is on the gram, and uh, and it's just gone into a fucking war of words of like yeah. ripping into each other. One guy's calling for the, the Wacker uh, Association to um, fucking you know suspend this guy. Then yeah. this other people piling on. Oh my that, god! That's why it, it, people have referred to the mid on appealer as uh, like the worst bloke in the worst comp. Blo- worst bloke. And we've got to be careful knows. here. Everyone knows. Because we've put a few things up recently, <laughs> whether it's through Channel 7 or whatever, and like, you know, with That's Village, and like pe- people are getting doxxed now. You know, they're getting tagged in. Yeah, yeah, be, yeah. So, yeah. like, our view on that is just fucking settle down. <laughs> you know, just, when you're on the field, yeah. it, it's just funny. Yeah. The way he's behaved is, yeah. is merely funny. Oh, it's obviously disgraceful. I yeah. mean, he's had, he's had truly an adult tantrum. Yes. Like, that's the same behavior that my son, who's two, year old, two years old, exhibits when I turn Bluey off. <laughs> <laughs> and if he does that, he goes to the room for 30 seconds, no more. Is that okay, Greg Blue? Just, yeah. Greg Blue? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not giving Bluey highlights. He's, yeah. he's doing touchscreen. <laughs> no, more Bluey. Who's Bluey in South Africa? His partnership with Steve Waugh. <laughs> Batted for a day. Yeah. Yeah, the, mate, the, the appeal is very much. <laughs> it's arrested development. Yeah. But, but yeah. here's the thing with that as well. You were making this comment off air, like it, it's a disgrace. But like, there is a thing in cricket, <laughs> it, and it is a disgrace. You know, he's he's, I'm so, sure he's it's a grown so man. Good. It's really but funny. But you, you you cross the line, you go over the line, and somehow in Australia, in particular, it gives you this kind of unstated um, permission to behave like a child. <laughs> Yeah. And so that's not the only piece of behaviour that we all kind of engage in. Right. So I don't want to like single this bloke out, but uh, it just happened. He thought he heard something. But now that Probably. fucking, <laughs> now that great cricket is being broadcast everywhere all the time, that's a real problem. Well, yeah. uh, there is that. There is that. I mean, it's just, it's just highlighting what we've been speaking about for the last eight years on the internet. It's all, it's all, it's all still there. I love the idea though, that maybe he didn't even hear anything. He just wanted to go up for the appeal. Because well, sometimes in club cricket, like a good appeal gets them. Like there were, there were clubs who in, in Sydney, who like they had good appeals and they used to get loads of decisions. You just pressure the umpires. You can do that. 100%. Like. The problem with this particular issue, though, he goes, like this this clip, is that like they're appealing as though something that's so obviously out should have been given out. But the problem is when that's a court behind and his bat's out there, if it was so obvious, they wouldn't actually appeal to the umpire the way yeah. they did. They, they still ask the question. Yeah. If it's so obvious, you just start celebrating, right? Mm. Yeah. Uh, at, and you leave the umpire thinking, oh, I've fucked up here. I've missed something. Yeah. But they actually asked the question. So once they engaged him in the process, then the inference was, well, there is a question there's here. There's a question And here. so there's a contradiction in him throwing himself to the turf. That's interesting. So yeah. that's just a little bit of naivety. The, 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 the appeal, inverted commas, if it's, if it's obvious, if it goes mm. to second slip, it's more like, yeah. Yeah. But the question, the question was posed, it was more of yeah. a how's that? How's that? Just, just to the bowler, if he's listening. So he started celebrating as though, because I watched this a few times. Right, he started celebrating guy. as though it was an obvious nick. Yeah. But I think he got a cue from the keeper and the slips that they were asking the question. Mm. So he turned around straight away. Now, a few more years of experience, yeah. he actually continues running down the wicket without showing his face mm. to that. That's all just it. That, LBW, different thing, because there's an inherent question to the umpire with an LBW. But a nick like that, it's like, no, you, you heard that umpire. It, it's more like you've got to be bemused. Mm. It's like, no, no, we're, all ce- we're in a huddle. We're celebrating. What? It's not out. Oh, no, you've had, you've, something's gone wrong here. Yeah. You've, you've missed something. But that was, they, they appealed. And that's where you get to say, fuck me. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just hear the wind whi- whispering yeah. past you, <laughs> past your ears. 
Anyway, a lot of carry on for fourth grade. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that should definitely hit some DMs for that comment. Hey, uh, Pez. Yeah. Big stuff happened with the Patreon yeah. the last few weeks. Yeah. So we close out the Australian summers. Obviously, yeah. a few weeks left. A big bash. So we mm. thought we'd, we'd finish the Australian summer with a bit of a flurry. And we got a couple of interviews. We we had an exclusive interview with Theodoropoulos, yeah. uh, who many people overseas won't know who Theodoropoulos is, but he played a lot of first-class cricket in Australia. Real player of promise. Fucking mm. gun, under-19 19, player. Open with Tim Payne. More yeah. famous in his cricketing life, I suppose, as a guy who subfielded and then dropped a catch, and then Michael Slater called him either um, Baird or Marcus Stoinis. Yes. Uh, about five years before Marcus Stoinis came into, you know, sort of a notoriety. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, he had a really interesting chat with him, and he's very funny. He's very well spoken. He he does like he has AFL stuff with uh, with yeah, uh, South he's, Australia. He's big he? cheese in uh, in right. Adelaide. Yeah, Triple M right. that covers covers AFL with Channel Seven. Really right. well spoken. Great storyteller. Yeah. So uh, get involved. Now, now uh, also, we spoke to uh, Pete, uh, Peter, Peter, I should well, say, yes, Peter, Peter Hatzaglou, and Warren actually dropped some comments about him saying, like, he's going to play in the IPL. And this guy played third grade, like, uh, about Peter a year Hatzaglou ago. Peter Hatzaglou was a third grader, a straight-up third grader from Melbourne University not a few seasons ago. He's had a rapid rise straight into the BBL, bowls really fast leggies and mm. uh, a little bit of cult stuff around him as well, as in he's in a cult. No. Is that, <laughs> he's in Landmark. His original QAnon. Yeah. On. Uh, but now Warren's, make, now, now Warren's making comments about him saying he could get picked up in the IPL. So yeah. we spoke to him a few weeks ago as well. Very down-to-earth guy. It's um, going to be like seeing the Beatles before they were famous. Exactly. Um, now, Ashley asked said to see Friday's episode 24, we discussed your reaction to the Gabba loss, uh, which included one response saying, we're not getting Mac because you can blame Tim Payne. <laughs> <laughs> that's patreon.com forward slash great. Yeah, join, join because that's not going to stop Patreon. That's actually going to probably ramp up. Uh, yeah. Now the summer's over, so get involved. Now, Australia-India Test Series fallout pairs. Now, obviously, mm. now Sri Lanka and England have had – Sri Lanka uh, – sorry, England have just won uh, in, Sri Lanka, in Sri Lanka, yeah, and we'll get into that in a moment's time. But the fallout from India and Australia is – is it is it like catastrophic levels? Feels big. Feels bigger than now. Now like now it's leading into always ne- next series. Always the biggest series. But now it feels like fucking anything can happen. Here, and now the ashes feel like a mile away, mm. don't they? On so the back, I of wouldn't this say loss. it's catastrophic. Like when they collapsed well, in Hobart against South Africa and stuff. Like no, was it was bad. it was like no, we're shit. Like we're actually we're a shit team. That needs to change. This is different. This mm. was. Hang on, I thought we were great. Mm. Uh, you know. We've got worldies. We've got Smith. We've got Warner. They're back. We've got the, f- the best quartet of all time. We've got Nathan Lyon. He's the goat. Our captain is the culture carrier. Mm. He's very neat behind the stumps. We're just about, you know, Labuschagne's coming through. They're rising. It was the world, you know, the script was. We knock over India at home, Gabba, all that kind of gear, bump them out, go to the World Test Championship, win that, and then go knock over England here. That was the cycle. Script ripped up. Mm. Scripts ripped up by India and, and like in very symbolic ways. And so there's a lot of navel gazing going on. I can get smelly when you get to that navel. You know, <laughs> what? Uh, Lang has been desperate to recreate the Steve Waugh team. That's been his kind of goal. You know, he, he mm. speaks in Steve Waugh parlance. It's the philosophy of it's harder to get in this team than get out. He's almost sort of wished it. Mm. You know, if I say it enough, it'll be true. Um, and we expect, like we, with the Aussie side, we expected unbridled dominance across every discipline in every realm. Yes, no brides. Bowlers. Unbridled, reckless. You know, everything we do has got to be great. And Lang, Lang has been trying to build this. But the India, the issue is that India showed this team its ceiling. Mm. I think it's got a ceiling now, this team. Like, is it, is it, has it butted the ceiling? Mm. Can it go higher, this team? Mm. And so the question we've got is, are we happy to merely maintain this very good team, good to very good team? Or do we want to be great? Because this, this team's probably good enough to go and do England over next summer. We'll just have some bouncy wickets, scare them, culture stuff. Yep. Um, you know, they don't have spinners and stuff like Ashwin. That'll be fine. Yep. Uh, or or do we do we have to go backwards to go forwards? You know, do we have to break it up a little bit to take it to the next level? Now, Pez, the, the, the real fear for me that came yeah. through India. And tell us your fears. Well I'll, t- well, I'll go into some of them. But um, but the fear was that, like, Australia were genuinely outplayed. Because yeah. I, try, I tried to articulate this very poorly on the Patreon show, I think it was. And it's like, I don't think Australia played that badly. How often were Australia on top throughout the series, but they could never fucking tip it over? Because Australia, now we spoke to Pete Hanscom about this, and he spoke mm. about his reaction to the public and his views and that sort of thing. It was, very, it was quite interesting the way he yeah. put He's it. It's a good chat. It's a good chat. Um, but... Australia were genuinely outplayed by like India C or fucking whatever it was. Consistently. Know? Right. The, the 36 was the outlier. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So like, so, so that, that to me is a scary bit. Cause I think I said this in the past, like Australia, if they played that well against basically any other team at the moment at home, they would have won that series easily. 
I reckon. Mm. Um, I actually saw like a really interesting some quotes from Ravi Ashwin about uh, the way he prepared. And I think he was going fucking insane in the bubble. He said he watched tape for eight hours. On the bounce. On the bounce. Yeah. Fucking had the, after the SCG test, they yeah. had to get Smith out. And he's like, well, I wanted to compete against the best and I couldn't compete against Vrat Kohli. Mm. Bit going mm. on there. Yeah. Um, so he wanted to compete against Steve Smith and he had these plans for it over and over again with Smith and he just fucking, you know, worked him out basically. Mm. Um, but th- this is the whole point. Australia were genuinely outplayed. So to your point, we, we should... Our, our expectation of the Steve Weir is that no one can outplay us. We, we should be playing at 75% at home. We should win every game, right? Yeah. And so like, and so then you get to the questions about Tim Payne, for instance, who's done a wonderful job. And he's got the second highest average for a wiki keeper in the history of Australian wiki keepers. Mm. Um, but we know what his ceiling is, I think. And so if you bring in someone like an Alex Carey, you will definitely go backwards. But for a bit. For a bit. But will Carey perhaps average 40 mm. in test cricket. Does he have a high ceiling? Does he have a high ceiling? I don't know. But yeah. all these questions Do we are suddenly, need a high ceiling? suddenly there. Well, India showed there the team at ceiling. Like, like when you can't knock over a team at the Gabba as, as what's meant to be a very good Australian side, mm. that's a ceiling, you know, like at home. Like Australian cricket has a blueprint at home. We play blueprint cricket. Blueprint. Worship at the altar of the off bail. Yeah. Go upstairs if you need to. Mm. Knock spinners back over their head, spread the field, hit singles, mm. Dominate generally. Mm. Want to score some runs? Mm. It's Jay Z, the, the blueprint. There's a couple of players in that Aussie side who can who can effectively uh, deliver that blueprint, and they're kind of like there's a few sacred cows in that side. Sacred cows. Warner's a sacred cow. Mm. Payne's a bit of a sacred cow. Lyons a sacred cow. And India kind of exposed it a little bit, and now mm. we're all at sea. We're like, well, hang on. Blueprint cricket works in mm. Australia. Now we're sea cows. Exactly. That's that's what you've taken from what I've said. <laughs> Do we risk going backwards to go forwards or do we go, you know what, bit of an anomaly, COVID cricket, yeah. India's fucking worldies, will be best of the rest, that's fine. Let's get England with this side. I mean, Langer is a loyal guy. He loves loyalty. To a fault. Yeah. Well, and mm. is it? Mm. I think there's a... San Andreas little, fault. So, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's word <laughs> association. Tim Payne, soft mover, good with the blade, nice features. Respect of the team has done an excellent job. His edge was his culture play, yeah. Tim Payne. But once the Ashwin ap- episode happened, yeah, he fucking lost that culture play. Yeah, you know that that's his edge. Yeah, and now it's a question. You know, then you've got Adam Gilchrist whispering in an adjacent way. When he was the same age, he stopped being able to keep. That's Gilchrist. Yeah, he wasn't saying get rid of Payne. He was just noting yeah. it can go. Yeah. So I'm not saying fuck Payne off. I right. think that would be wrong. Yeah. But I think he's at the age where you'd say, hey, Tim, go to South Africa, show us that you're the man, go and make it 2-0, 3-0, takes us to the World Test Championship, show us it with your performances. But, you know, you, you pay the rent on success every time. Mm. You, don't just, you don't just get a saloon passage. So, I think it's true because I'm, 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 a, I'm a pain guy. I love it. Oh, yeah, the whole thing. And, and I think he deserves to go to South Africa. And, of course, he's going to. I mean, just a complete yeah, overreaction to, yeah. to fucking bin the captain yeah. after, you know, one bad – couple of bad games, whatever. But it is, it is a thing of any professional athlete, when they get to that age, you're basically game to game, aren't you? you, know, and, you like should, if and you should say that for yourself. You'd be like, yeah, I, I've got to prove myself every he probably time does. at that age. Yeah. He probably does. Exactly. Yeah. People are all – you know, but, but if Payne's kind of had that culture carrier yeah. uh, edge kind of um, ripped at the seams a little bit, mm. people are starting to eye off farm boy Cummins. Yeah. You know, sweat coming off the brow, steaming in for Australia, shadows lengthening at the Gabba, the only bloke putting in. He reads Bruce Pascoe's Dark Emu. He's a thinking man. Right. Can he carry the culture? People are saying yes. Well, Steve Smith has an ice cream when he scores 100. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so it's between those And he's two. a bat. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's a how fucking you, ice cream. How How's he going to be captain? Mate, how do you celebrate? <laughs> Do you, mate? <laughs> well, ice cream, is it? I think you can have uh, mature discussions about sacred cows in Australian cricket. You know, let's do it. Um, so, yeah, I, I think Wade Wade might miss the plane to South Africa now. That's interesting. I, Why well, do you say that? I say that because there comes a point when you're 33 years old, you average 29.8 in Test cricket, 29.9, I should say, right. after 36 tests, 
And speaking of ceilings, I think it's very mature and reasonable to say, like, that's probably where you're at, brother. Why don't we yeah. try a 26-year-old who averages that amount and see if we can get some more... That's uh, what Greg Chappell would say. And now, now that he basically predicted the entire series, I'm I'm inclined to um, say that I welcome Greg Chappell as a new overlord. When you have... <laughs> Chappell's, ba- Chappell's back in Chappell's fashion. Chappell's fucking back yeah. in, baby. Well, they are that, like, there, there's a bit of dad's army about the Aussie side heading into um, the Ashes next year, next summer. You've got... Payne will be 37. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got Lyon will be 34. Mm-hmm. Uh, Smith will be 32. Warner will be 35. Stark, 30. Hazelwood, 30. Pattinson, 31. Um, now, England's mm. opening bowls are 50. But <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, yeah. I'm just saying you can have these discussions without necessarily like uh, sounding like you're sledging people. But I... Yeah. I I think Australia needs to consider a little bit of a pivot. There isn't, needs to be some pivot. They hold on to these guys and they're dealing with these issues hey, isn't this next the, summer. Yeah. Isn't, this, isn't this the scary thing about it, though? That this, this, for me, anyway, and I am the arbiter, and I'll be yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get the finger of the pulse of the cricketing nation, okay. right? Right. And so it just came out of nowhere that, like, this this yeah. was going to be a smooth ride. We'll knock over near 30, 60, yeah. beauty, probably 4 yeah. nil. Everyone's saying yeah. that. Okay, and then we'll give like, them 3-1, one, 3-0. Three and, and then all eyes on uh, the World Test Championship, mm. we, re, we re, reclaimed that. We'll get through <laughs> South Africa, win a test. That's all we need to do. Whatever. Go to Lords. South Africa's probably going to be off. They've got a horrendous new strain over there. It's yeah, really whatever. bad stuff. Yeah. Probably won't even go. Payne will lift the trophy. And then that, and then Payne's ending of Payne's career in the, either the World Test Championship or the Ashes yeah. in January, that's, that's like the finishing chapter of sandpaper as a culture. That's supposed Correct. to be the arc of it. Now- I really that was actually in the cultural review, but that was a bit people didn't read. <laughs> it's sort of back pages. Yeah. So sort of flicked it through. So I think that's that was kind of the plan. But then obviously sport doesn't work out that way ever. And this has just sort of come out of nowhere. Now, like India, are they a rising superpower? It seems like it. Yeah. And so it's going to be really interesting what happens. I mean, it feels like they could fucking smash England at home. Could be. Could do. Mm. I don't know. But it, it feels a bit that way. Mm. Um. Yeah, so Australian cricket has to decide, do we just let India go because they're now the West Indies from the 70s and the 80s and no one's beating them for 20 years? They won't years? cop that. They won't cop that. I reckon or like, does Australia need to continue searching to be number one unbridled dominance in all formats because that's, that's the only way we feel safe? And if so, how do you achieve that? Because well, yeah. our good team just got dusted well, for at the Gabba. For as long as Langer's in charge, he'll pursue that. I, I'd imagine that that loss at the Gabba would have hurt him more than anyone else. Probably. I'm know. sure there's some bloke out in fucking Toowoomba who <laughs> feels it way more than he needs to. Oh, he lost 30 grand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fucking pant. Yeah. You well, know, Warner. Let's look yeah, who is Warner. Warner. Well, Warner's interesting, isn't it? Because um, I, think, I think it was best friend of the show, Ed Cowan, wasn't it? Who said, <laughs> you know? dog Daisy just <laughs> popped her head up. Hi, Daisy. We've got a friend here. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, that's, that's a dog. No, it's <laughs> yeah. not a woman in my no, apartment. <laughs> Oh, that's where your head went. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it was best friend of the show who said, Ed Cowan, wasn't it, who mm. said that Warner's been on decline for a little while. Now, he averages 40. I'm not sure they were exact words. Okay, what did he precise. say? Oh, it was, it was, I think he was making a, I don't know his exact words, but he was making a broader point. Uh, I think, I mean, I've got some numbers here. Like, aside from a ton against England in that drawn MCG match in 2017 where Jackson Bird died um, yeah. for all the other bowlers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know it, it's, it's a bit like silly putting like saying aside from this match, right? But that really was a fucking road. That yeah, weekend. that was. Yeah. Um, tell me the last time Warner hit a test ton against England, India, or South Africa. So the the, the big boys, a ton. Ah, uh, you're going back. Yeah, World World Cup. <laughs> India at the uh, a test ton. Indi- yeah. India at the SCG 2015. Okay. Uh, it's five years ago. Uh. So and he'll be thirty five next summer's ashes. So yeah. he's 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 not been fit this series, yeah. and he's so he's going to get that asterisk. It's a big one for him in South Africa, uh, and um, that. So I'm just thinking, there's just a couple of guys who are getting on a little bit, and it's just going to be interesting to see if Langer holds to the loyalty. Says no, this is the team. These are the guys. A couple of extenuating yeah. circumstances. I mean, one change like head just comes in for Wade, for example. We're expecting that. Um, I think it would be foolish to not reinvest in the team now because they've got the South Africa series and then there's pretty much nothing until the Ashes mm. as far as test cricket goes. Mm. Mitchell Stark, can he swing the ball during COVID? How many times has Warner dominated a good attack? I'm thinking well, I'm thinking well, now... And now well, a good attack, yeah. Because I'm now thinking like... I'm now thinking... 
Like every every attack now has a fucking world. Like South Africa are in the dumps at the moment in terms of where their crickets are. They're actually starting yeah. it. They're I actually, love how many people are saying that. It's fucking. I just but, so but I look at get. their bowling attack. And it's like, geez, I wouldn't fancy Rabada on a, yeah. probably a fucking green one in Joburg. Exactly. And I just feel like and you know Archer out here could be quick wickets. Maybe he could struggle there. Obviously struggle. Well, yeah, the the two problem England here, will have out here is that they don't have spinners that can control the run rate. That is, yeah, a, that is the, that's one, I think that's one of the things forgotten about the 11, 12, 10, 11 yeah, series, whenever Swan. they won here. Swan is Swan. Gen- genuine world-class exactly. spinner. And they, and they, they worked around him with Breslin played a couple of tests. Steve Finn, Anderson played all five. I'm pretty sure. And Anderson, whilst he might not take any wickets, I mean, his economy rate, in that series was like fucking under two. Yeah. I mean, he's like, but then again, you just bowl on leg, leg stump to Steve Smith and just pack a field and it's fine. It's interesting it's to see good. how he's going to overcome that. Cause it's sort of, it hasn't mm. been, no, it has been his strength, has been his strength, leg stump. Mm. And now it's, if you just bounce that a little bit higher towards the armpit a bit more, it seems mm. like it's a real problem. Mm. So he's not a massive offside player. I mean, he'll figure it out. He yeah. averages fucking he only 61. Averaged 50 this series. Then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But Bradman had a bad series in body line. Exactly. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. It's just interesting. It'll be interesting to see whether they stick with the current crop, which I actually think long term, medium term, might be a mistake. I think they need a bit of refreshing that side. Maybe only one or two players, and I think Payne should be series by series, uh, and with a lot of respect for him, and that's okay, mate. Um, a while ago, actually during COVID, we were questioning whether Stark could swing it with without yeah. without you being able to put slide yeah. on the ball, and turns out he can't. <laughs> um, and therefore you got to wonder like. Is his place in jeopardy? I mean, like, it's really interesting because overseas, particularly England, they're like, Stark is the best bowler we've ever seen. I don't know why he's not fucking playing every test match, yeah. batting three and bowling, bowling the new ball. Yeah. But especially batting three. <laughs> just that left hand combination, yeah. you know? He'd actually bat well with Warner. Anyway, um, the, yeah, but obviously when you watch it a fair bit, it's, it's actually, when he struggles, he looks really easy to score off at, yeah. at test level. I mean, fuck, he's still lightning quick, but he looks so easy to score off for these amazing batsmen. Well, if and you so, take swing away from Stark, is he among the top quicks? Yeah. Well, that, that's his superpower. Yeah. Like, what, what is Stark without swing? Yeah. Doesn't seem to bother James Anderson in the COVID world at the moment. Yeah. He seemed to be able to get in a hoop it about. I've got, got a question whether Anderson might be the most skillful bowler of all time. Is that is that obvious or is that... Oh, I don't know. I think skillful. No, I think... I think McGrath is a better bowler, right? Better, I mean, whatever that means. But like McGrath... Headley Verity for me. <laughs> <laughs> because I have no interest outside cricket. Now, where does Gladstone Small fit into this? Um, but like Anderson, in terms of skill and control, like he'll never let you down, will he? Anderson, oh. And when's, when's Anderson bowl a bad spell? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So like, yeah, so so Stark fitting into the lineup. I mean, he, he is probably the first one to go of the bowlers. I mean, Hazewood, Hazewood had a great series as well. Yeah, he got one Hazewood's wicket. fun. He got one wicket less than Cummins. Cummins yeah. had 21 wickets, Hazewood 20. Yeah. Lyon, they're not going to, uh, he's the best spinner in Australia and, yeah. and he works a well. He works. That's a problem, but yeah. And then, yeah, pro- well. I think that's the other thing with Warner as well. We're like, oh, Warner, question marks over Warner. But the deeper question is like, well, who then? We've got Pukowski in. Well, that's who, a great who's, question who's, about. Who's a remade opener. That's or, the thing about number five and the keeper, yeah. for instance, like, it's just like, a few holes there. Yeah, just a few holes. Like a few a fingers in the old dike for Australia. But bowlers, no, no problem. No problem with bowlers though. I mean, we've got sixteen bowlers lined yeah. up to play Test cricket. No, that's fine. But that's that. I think that, that feels the same with every country actually, except for like who's got great depth in batting? India. India. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And and everyone else is like one worldie, two worldies maybe. Yeah. Everyone else is filling in for a bit. Yeah, but we're competing against India now. We don't care about best of the rest. We need to. We need. We need unbridled dominance for our own safety. What do you reckon happens in South Africa? Oh, I'm afraid of South Africa. Oh, they'll grow a leg. Mm. Nortier is quick. Yeah. Rabada. They'll all fucking turn up. Yeah. Quinton Cock. All of a sudden, will be able to play again. Mate, they'll smell blood. They'll mm. smell blood. Yeah. Faf Duplessis is doing his thing. He's getting the towel out again. He'll 100%. probably bat in the towel. And the only way Australia, you know, like Australia, can only counter Alpha with Alpha. And the, and can you imagine? South Africans talking about the Aussies needing to behave as well after everything. <laughs> They're going to have to go with one hand behind their back, the Aussies. They're going to have to say nothing, play like polite cricket yeah. and compete against blokes on green tops wanting to fucking kill them. Yeah. It's going to be a really good series. Well, and Australia Australia really um, reacts well when people stand up to them as well. Like Quinton de Kock, Faf, Rabada, these guys have frightened us so many times before and they'll do it again. Yeah. They got, these guys all fucking show up. Yeah. South Africa's in ruins. Mm. But they'll be able to play. Now, mate, England and Sri Lanka. England have it. Now I think about it, because two years ago they won their 3-0. They've just won 2-0 at Gaul, 
during the week. Mm -hmm. So they've now won five tests in Sri Lanka in a row. Now, what I want to say is Sri Lanka, pretty shit. Would we have won that over there? <laughs> I watched the way the ball was turning on the last <laughs> yeah. few days. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they were basically opening the bowling with spinners, Sri Lanka. Dom Sibley, I think he had three runs in six digs or something like that. Six runs in no, six six runs in three digs. That yeah. makes sense. He got fifty six in the in the fourth innings of the second test match. But um but yeah. It's interesting. So that that second test match in Gore, Jimmy Anderson six for thirty nine of twenty eight overs <laughs> now has a lower <laughs> bowling average in Asia than Kapil Dev. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good bowler, eh? Yeah, he sounds like a good bowler. Still, um, I, I like that we're still having to talk about whether or not he is. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh, Angelo Matthews scored his 11th Test 100. Okay. Uh, Joe Root then scored 186 on the back of 228 last Test match. 19th Test 100 for Joe Root. Average is now 49.39. It's around up to 50-odd. Yeah, of course. But Joe, is he back? Mm. Back in the big boys. You have to deliver against the big boys to be back among the big boys, unless you're Kane Williamson. What about how many people in the world at the moment could score back-to-back -back daddy hundreds? Mm. Probably not. There's probably four, five. Back-to-back -back daddies. So, but the, in the conversation of like the big three and then Joe Root's now the big four, let's call it, is it a big four? But there's layers to that because Smith is like, in tests, Smith averages 61 and then it's like 54 for Williamson, 53 for Coley, 49 for Root. Right. So I feel like there's layers even within the yeah. – it's like Messi, Ronaldo, then the rest, you know? Well, like, let me ask you. Has Root leapfrogged who many would say is the fourth among the big boys and the straggler, Baba Razan? Oh, mate, fucking spare me, Baba Razan. I mean, yeah. Manus has had an equally good run of like of great – Has Root leapfrogged Manus? Yes. Well, Root has so many more runs behind him as well, and which also, matters. The, but the, the key indicator here, so Root's got 19 test hundreds now. Warner's got 24. But how many times has Warner's second? No, Warner doesn't have 24 test tons, does he? I'm pretty sure he 18, does. 18, 19. I'm pretty sure uh, I checked that okay. today. Well, here we go. Here we go. Let's jump online, jump onto the internet. Just wait. We're just, we're just doing this. 24. Holy hell. So Dave Warner's got 24 test hundreds. Uh, 23 of those have been in the MCG in the second innings. <laughs> but my point being, <laughs> that's fucking so harsh. <laughs> Couple against New Zealand and yeah. Pakistan. <laughs> Bully boy. But my point is that, like, how many times has Warner scored a second innings 100 and it wins the game because it just because the opposition can, cannot win? So, like, if you, you've made the point before, to score, your best batsman has to score hundreds that wins games. And Joe Root in these two games has single handedly won the games because they've been He's such, delivered on our, been on our challenge. They've been such low scoring games. And Joe Root is the outlier in the same way that Smith was in the Ashes, that there was this one amazing stick, and that's a difference. That's yeah. always a difference, like, because Leach has bowled well in this series, Bess has bowled well as well, Anderson obviously six for it. The bowlers are solid. Mm. But you got one guy who's going to fucking score daddy hundreds, and he wins a game. Yeah, now, respect. So, so Joe Root's 19th Test 100, is that's exactly what he's got to do to join the big boys. And that's one of my point being, yes, he's overtaken Manus because he's winning games mm. at number four for England. I think realistically here, like I mean, I totally agree with your view on Bubba Azam as well. Let's just fuck him off out of there with respect to him. Mm. You're not becoming a big boy unless you've got bulk hundreds beside your name as well anyway. Like what Root's done in the past, or what's, he, what's he got, 19 test times, 20, something like that? 19. Yeah, uh, so that that matters. Um, so Manus needs – Manus can wait. For Manus, a bit, okay? Manus got five. He yeah, got Manus five can hundreds. wait a little bit. You've got to amass that kind. You've got to have that bulk behind you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Root, Root's still a rung below Williamson for me. Oh yeah, I, I'm oh not, yeah. I'm, I not, agree. Um, I agree. I'm not ruling out that he can't change that. How he plays in India, you know, could that could be huge if he goes and does, you know, some amazing stuff over there. He'll catapult himself above. Hundreds in India are worth fucking double, as far as I'm concerned. Especially match winning ones. Christ, I got any spinners in India. Yeah, I have a couple. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how that series goes. Now, what, what is exciting, though, Pez, is that New Zealand and England are going to play a test series in June. There's two tests. There's one at Lords, and I want to say the other one's at – is it Old Trafford? Might be. One of them is at Lords. They're playing two test series in June. It's been confirmed now for one New Zealand. That's 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 a matchup. That's a matchup that I'm excited by. Both bowling tacks good. Williamson v. Root. That's an exciting series. I'm up for that. And also, that's good preparation for New Zealand in the World Test Championship when they play against India. Are you skipping the series in India now when you say that? What do you mean? Sorry, I just missed what you're saying there. Were you saying 
after they play in yeah, India. Yeah, after they play yeah, in India. They, yeah. yeah, well, they've got like 18 tests against 18, each other. So There's about 13 million tests before the Ashes. So England play 18 tests this year, five, yeah. the last five which are the Ashes, mm. 17 in the calendar year, then one in Sydney, which mm. is in 2022. And they play India. They play four tests in India. Then they play two against New Zealand at home. Yeah. And then they play four or five against India. Right. Um, in like in July, August. Right. Um, and then they obviously play in the Ashes as well. There might yeah. be another series that I missed there. Uh, there's so many narratives. Hey, they, they're so going to need fucking 85 yeah. squad members yep. rotating through. Broad didn't play this game, played the third, first game. But they're doing that, aren't they? they the guys are, are going that. home or whatever, they understand. Stokes isn't even playing. Yeah. In quarantine somewhere. I thought I saw that photo of him going over to India though. Anyway. Oh no, sorry, he's me playing in Sri Lanka. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. I think he's saving himself. Now. Saving himself. Well. Wow. Save him. You see a bit of chat in this game? Yeah, chat in the stump mics? Yeah. Dick Weller, the Sri Lankan keeper, yeah. having a bit of a chat. It, it was all above board though. Joe Joe Root said that Chandra Milk, you might have seen this uh internet users. Come on, Chandy, throw your wicket away. And then the next ball, uh Chandamore fucking slog sweeps the ball off maybe Don Bess or Leach, one of the two. Straight straight to it's just funny. Mm. They're actually very similar to um Mind the Windows Tino, you know, Flint mm. off sledging Tino Best. That kind of gear. It's all about ball, though, a bit of fun. Yeah. They just know how to do it. The English, <laughs> <don't they? laughs> just a little witticism, yeah. witticisms. Uh, very civil. <clears throat> very civil people. Well done, England, on winning in Sri Lanka again. Mm. The Big Bash, mate. The Big Bash, the real cricket. This is where it's at now. And it's not looking that bad, the Big Bash, with the Test players back. Mate, the Test players come back. A and you Bit think, of a logjam, the top of the table as we go to where They're all playing today on January 26. Mm-hmm. Good fight there that CA picked a couple of days after pain. What? Um... <laughs> Cynical. Uh, yeah, so it, it uh, not mining it. I've actually enjoyed it the last couple of days. Will start come back for the Sixers. That changes things for them. I don't know. Darcy Short, Matt Wade opening the batting. Wade's a fucking great white ball player. Yeah, he's fantastic. He should go to New Zealand. Yeah, uh, yeah, mate. It's funny with the Big Bash, isn't it? Where like now I've I've come to the conclusion of my own schedule for the Big Bash. Where like usually the last Test match of the summer is the SCG Test match. Obviously a bit different this year for COVID, but like why not start the Big Bash maybe the week before Christmas, lead it up so you get you still get your Boxing Day hit of the Big Bash, and then as soon as the last Test match finishes in Sydney, then like then the Big Bash goes until February. It's a six five six weeks run there, and it's all during school holidays still, so you get those crowds. But it's just then you you stack the. You stack the BBL with all the test stars, and that's what people—that's what people want to see. They want to mm. see the best players. What fucking domestic competition exists mm. without the best players of that country playing in that competition? Mm. It's ridiculous that they don't play, or they play a fucking one game before the finals. What do you reckon the priorities are, mm. for, like in terms of an actual hierarchy, in terms of a feudal system yeah. for the dad dick worldy players around uh, around the world? So let's just say in Australia, for example, Smith Cummins. Let's just leave it at that. Maybe okay, we'll throw Warner in as well. Smith Cummins Warner. Do you think it would be like Aussie Test Summer? Any Australian Test match, and then the IPL is the next most important thing. Or do you think any Australian? It can't be any Australian fixture because someone like Cummins, for example, opted to play in the IPL and then rest for a couple of ODIs. Yep. Um, like where does a he wouldn't and, do that? And where where do you think the BBL fits in? Because Omanis went straight to the BBL. Truly loves cricket. Uh, yeah. I think his garage would be up there as well for him. Yeah, that's right. Um, so test number one, definitely. Yeah. It de- and, then, like, and, then, like, and then after that, it depends what the cycle is. Of that bilateral year. ODI series versus I- IPL. The IPL is, for the players, no doubt massive because yeah. it's not only just the income they get from that six-week tournament or whatever, how long it goes for. It's also their long-term financial play for um, their life. Their life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so do well there. Yeah. All good. Mm. After that, it depends what the cycle is. So, like, I think the like Cummins wouldn't have missed the the T twenties and the ODIs in, back in October if there was a World Cup, if there was a T twenty World Cup in Australia yeah. that year, mm. like it was supposed to be. But it was obviously COVID fucked everything. Mm. Or the World Cup for ODIs was supposed to be, you know, maybe four mm. months later. He's not going to miss that. So, like, so it goes tests, IPL, and then you figure it out year to year. Mm. I reckon BBL is low on that list. Well, anyway, I'm sure. Yeah. I think your scheduling suggestion is right. I'm sure they'd consider it and they'd probably say some shit about school holidays and commercial opportunities. But, like, I I agree. It's actually picked up a little bit of acceleration, the BBL, with these test guys back. The sides, especially the top four or five sides, all seem to kind of um, have some pretty quality players every time you turn it on. A good bowler's bowl into a good bat and anything can happen. Uh, and any of these teams can win as well. I mean, I, like, they're still 
I think the top seven teams are still in it mm. as we go to air before the January 26 games. I see that the Super Smash in New Zealand has been played at the moment because they finished their Test Smash summer soil like Kane Williamson, Tim Southie, Trent Bolt, all those guys are now playing the, in mm. their domestic tournament. And you've got to wonder, like, is there more money in, in CA for a broadcasting game of some, you know, ridiculous ODI game in the middle of January? Remember last year they went to India? They went to India, so there's going to be more yeah. money for those players there then. That's how they make more money, definitely. Yeah. But, like, what's the long-term sustainability? So, like, let's say South Africa were here, right, or Sri Lanka, and they play an ODI in the middle of January, and then all the players, international players, are going to play that game. They're making more money from that, or they're going to make more money longer term in a play for the Big Bash if you put all your best players mm-hmm. domestically into this Big Bash competition. Yeah. Grow the tournament that way. Then maybe if you put all the best players from Australia, maybe, maybe some other guys, maybe the South Africans come over, maybe the Kiwis come over as well. And then you strengthen that competition. Then all of a sudden you've got a huge product in your hands. Maybe. I don't know. Fewer games, better players, better wickets should do the trick. See, it's easy. It's easy, guys. And also bash boost point. <laughs> uh, Pez, we're speaking to Pete Hanscom. Hey, it was a good chat. It was a good chat. He's a lovely guy. He'd be up there with, with best friends. Mm. Best friends, it's a, ranking, climbing, yeah. it's a ranking system. Well, we have a ladder, yeah. It's like MySpace or Top Gear. Um, I was almost said Top Gun. But Pez, this is all brought to you, of course, these interviews this season by Ponting Wines. Please, take uh, it away. Uh, thank you very much. Now, Ponting Wines have obviously been very kind to sponsor each interview this season. Yeah. Uh, they've been very kind to do so. They also sent us a little six, a little six-packer. Yeah. Something-somethings. They're delicious. A little case. Yeah, and you, get, and you can get ten percent off the price of a case using the code Get a few. Yeah, that's pontingwines.com. And, do that, and I know, look, if if you if you're trying to dry out in January, then all power to you. Uh, as you're heading you to, as you're heading to Feb, work comes back. You need a little, just take a little edge off. Why don't you do it with the you know, ponting clothes of play, Shiraz, <laughs> <laughs> or in fact. A whole case of it. With 10% <laughs> off using the code Get a few Ponting Wines. That is pontingwines.com.au. Here he is. He's Pete Anscom. Okay, we're joined by one of the great friends of the show who actually made himself available at short notice. We're just saying off air that, you know, it's just amazing how many players just, ah, just a bit busy. Flat out, And they're still there flat out and flat out. buy secure environments. Yeah. Um, but not this man. This man has made himself available to he's talk got to plenty the great of time. cricketer because he, he does service to the community. And I'm talking about Pete Hanscom. <laughs> Pete, welcome back to the great cricketer. Oh, it's great, boys. You know, I'd drop anything just to be on this show. <laughs> so much sincerity. I love when people lie. To <laughs> well, it's, it's, there's so much to talk about, Pete, but it is, you know, BBL season, I guess. Uh, so let's start there. You know, the Hurricanes, as we go to where the Hurricanes are on a roll now, you know, Wadey's back. You've just pumped the sixes overnight. Uh, you dropped yourself, and we'll talk about that um, mid-game. You might storm into the semis, or what do they call it? Um, I mean, are you just, you know, absolutely bursting with excitement? for what the Hurricanes might be able to achieve this year, or are you um, just pretty keen to get out of a biosecure uh, bubble? Yeah, bubble life's uh, a bit interesting, that's for sure. Um, but, uh, but yeah, in terms of Hurricanes, yeah, we've, we're fine. And um, what weight he brings when he so he's come back in, and, I mean, we saw it last night, he just comes out and he's lapping blokes with fine leg and third man back and um, hitting bombs and, and what... What that does to Darcy up the other end is is huge. So, yeah, hopefully we take that momentum into um, into some finals. But we've got one more game to to make sure we qualify first. Mm-hmm. Well, as it is cricket, let, let's let's harp on the negatives. Um, Peter, uh, it, it's <laughs> Peter. It, it's uh, it's interesting because obviously you previously with the Stars. Um, and, and it's a strange thing where they've had such a, you know, star studded lineup, pardon the pun, and they've still got there. They've still got Maxwell, Stoinis, yeah, Sampa, three yeah, of the yeah. best players in the competition. And they're going to struggle to make the finals this year. And obviously now you've moved to the Hurricanes, you know, and now that you're sort of outside the, you know, stars bubble or hub or whatever it is, can, is there more broader perspective about why it hasn't worked out for the stars so far in the, in the big bash? Oh, geez, that's a, that's a tough question. I don't want to. I don't want to throw any of the boys under the bus. Uh, but um, <laughs> some of my best mates in that team. But uh, no, it's um, it is tough. It's such a weird format. T Twenty cricket. Like you can be absolutely smoking it, but one guy from the other team can can just take it away from you. Um, but they're they're such a scary team. The Stars. I mean, we we were lucky to. I mean, we got one win against them, one loss, but Maxi was going against us in that first game and, you know, just, just got out at the right time for us. Um, and then the next game, we got absolutely Marcus Stoinist. Um, he'd come out and made 98 or 96 or something and just smacked them everywhere. So 
they've got um, they've got the firepower, uh, and if they do make the finals, they're going to be a scary, scary team. So they get in a roll, it's it's dangerous. But mm. yeah, it just you know hasn't hasn't quite quite clicked for them yet. But you know they're they're there thereabouts. Mm. Just a question on the game last night against the Sixers again as we, as we go to where. So in the first innings for those listening overseas who, who don't follow every single Big Bash game um, and that, that's their loss. Yes. Uh, the, you guys were just on fire to kick off the game. It was um, it was it was the Darcy Short and Matthew Wade show. No wickets at 10 overs. And with the X Factor, you can change a player um, and bring someone in. Now, you, you've been the captain of the Hurricanes all season. Obviously, Wade's come in now. And, um, and you've sort of subbed yourself out of the game. Now, I guess my question is like, as short and Wade are pummeling boundaries during the first 10 overs, like I just want to know, honestly, like with each, with each boundary, is your emotions becoming happier and more relaxed in the knowledge that you're out of the game or are you hoping they get out and like, be honest, is it, you know, cause I'd say for me, you know, cause we're similar cricketers, yeah. any opportunity to not play the game is met with a lot of like relaxation, anxiety Relief. released. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We well, you know when you wake up, when you wake up on Saturday morning and it's and it's raining and you you do that little cheer inside. You're like, yes, they'll mm. they'll call this off by lunchtime and we can get to the pub, <laughs> um, which is brilliant. So, yeah, last night it got to about the the sixth or seventh over. It's probably the sixth over. I was like, wow, Wadey and, and Shorty are going well here. If they're none down by ten, I reckon. I reckon the smart move here is probably just me out and bring in big, uh, big Timmy David to try and hit some hit some sixes because he's got one hell of a swing on him. Um, but I didn't want to say anything just yet because you know in cricket we're all superstitious and you don't want to move and you don't want to start predicting the future because then everything goes to shit. So um, I waited until about the eighth over, eight and a half. I was like, no, nah, we're pretty we're pretty safe here. Spoke to spoke to Griff, um, and I couldn't believe how quickly he jumped at it. I was like, oh. Bloody hell, mate! You know I'm a I'm a bit of a senior player, but at least give us you know I struck struck him at 200 last game. At least give it a bit of thought. And he was like, no, nah, no, nah, great, great idea. Yeah, we'll we'll lock that in. Um, so yeah, they went for it. I put the feet up, um, ran out the odd the odd helmet or the odd drink a bit later, and yeah. kicked the footy yeah. after the game. It was a no beautiful, relaxing, relaxing day. What a day! Do you, do you still get like the same match payment? <laughs> Yeah, beauty about Big Bash, mate. It's just contract, no match payments. So <laughs> <laughs> happy days. <laughs> and as a cash up front, no. no. Um, uh, no. Now, ben, I want, I want to ask you about, I mean, how all over the season, all over the place has this season been rather? Because obviously Victoria started like the Shield like two weeks late. Then you guys couldn't train for a bit. Then you played a couple of games in Adelaide or, or because of COVID, obviously. And then there was like this extended BBL program in sort of in the idea was in the initial stages, I think, because there might've been some um, lost games through, through COVID or whatever. Uh, so it's a long BBL season. I saw during the week that St. Kildare club team lost to Hawthorne, who then had to sing the, sing the team song um, using a, uh, you know, song lyric sheet. Uh, Cause they had won so long. And now there's bubbles. I mean, how's, how, how has your summer been? <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Right. Well, that's a great recap. Um, <laughs> all over it. But yeah, it's been, it's been weird. Jesus has been weird. Like, um, yeah, that that Shield Hub in Adelaide was was tough for for different reasons for different teams. Um, you know, we had to do a quarantine going into the hub, um, so that was a relatively strict hotel quarantine with, you know, still still three to four hours out each day to train, which was which was awesome because you need to get out um, and just see some people. But um, so that was tough for us there. But then on the flip side, Adelaide had that little mini breakout just as we were leaving. So pretty much every other state except for Victoria had to quarantine when they went home. Mm. So rather than, you know, rather than them going home and being able to relax before what was going to be another tough big bash hub, they had to go home, quarantine for two weeks, and then go into into another hub um, where they've had, you know, minimal freedom as well. So yeah, it's been it's been a weird one. Um, even the internationals coming over as well, like they thought they were going to be able to get to train didn't happen um and, and we're seeing it with the tennis players at the moment as well like it is it is tough to to try and prepare yourself for sport if you're just sitting in a room um by yourself for two weeks there's only so much you can do yeah mm, yeah. yeah it's grim speaking of things being weird the, the test players have come back into the bbl setup now so with you guys that's Wade and pain mm. so Wade assumes a captaincy 
and then the test captain revert re- reverts to reserve wicketkeeper. So does Tim Payne still manage to like alpha his way through the Hobart setup, or now that he's a reserve, <laughs> like does his social capital diminish? And just can you just run us through some of the complexities there? Yeah, well, you wouldn't believe the. Um, yeah, no, he's still got he's still got the alpha mm. alpha side of him. Um, mm. And the boy is coming out of the woodwork as well. Like, oh, Payne, let's. Are you having breakfast tonight? Yeah, I'll come down. I'll come down. Um, or like, Payne just put a message on the group before he's going for a walk, uh, just to go get a coffee or something. Um, about half the squad just jumped at it. So yeah. the boys, the boys aren't silly. You know, you want to get around the, you want to get around the alphas and and make sure that you know you get under their wing and on their good side. So no, he's he's come in beautifully. Um, I run the drinks still, you know, still done the done the one percenters that you expect of, you know, it's, it's not just um, do what I say, it's do what I do as well. So that was uh, that was pretty good. But no, they both they both come in, they're both um, flying. And how was that walk you went on with Honey? Was it good? Yeah, it was great, mate. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I, I was right next to him. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's funny, Pete. Like. Um, like it feels like more than in recent memory, uh, maybe maybe as a result of what's happened with the Aussies against India, like you know the Australian public's found their inner national selector. You know, like every, <laughs> everyone has a view. Um, you made some comments recently defending Tim Payne, and um, just sort of wondering, like like as a player, like how much public selection talk are you exposed to, or do you expose yourself to, um, and like what percentage of it is absolute dross? <laughs> So I made I made the mistake um, about two years ago when I was still playing Test cricket. I was on the fringe and I was listening to all the public the public opinion and pretty much all of it was like shit technique, get rid of him. Um, and so that that sucks. So I pretty much made a decision from there just to like I'm not I'm not listening to this. Like I know what's I know what's going on. I know what's happening in the um, in the setup. Um, can't can't be bothered listening to to the public uh, public opinion. Um, but yeah, you can't, it is hard to shy away from it because you do see it and you hear, you know, other boys talk about it and they're like, oh, I can't believe people are saying this and rah, rah. So you do, you do pick up things, but no, I try, I try my best to stay away from it. Mm. I mean, you talked there about a years ago when, when you were playing that, uh, in the last India home series, um, that was the year when obviously Smith and Warner and Bancroft were all banned during that summer. I mean, can you describe what it's like to face, you know, Boomer, that sort of the wanger arm and the entire quality of the Indian tack generally. I mean, we've, we've hypothesized many times in this podcast about how the fuck you even see the ball coming out of his arm. Like, I mean, how, how do you face Boomer when he's like stuttering in? Then just. No, nah, it's, it's nuts. Boomer is just, he's next level. Um, and something that, you know, no one's really seen in world cricket, maybe Malinga, like, although at least he kind of run him. Like Boomer is just walking in and then he's got, he's about two steps out and he goes bang, bang. And then it's just like a bowling machine. It just comes out at pace. Uh, so it's hard to, it's hard to get cues um, mm. because it seems like, I mean, he's got a good technique and he gets right over his front foot. So he's getting his, his pace through that, but it, it seems like he's got a really, really good wrist. Mm. So the cue between his bouncer and his Yorker and his slow ball is so minimal that, you're just kind of hoping that you hit the ball and it, it doesn't hit you on your pads or your stumps or your head. Yeah. 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 Just, just with these selection issues, Pete, like, um, so you, so you've, it feels to me like you're right at the center of a lot of these things because like you've obviously selected yourself out of a game last night. <laughs> um, you got Wade usurping pain and then back at Victoria, there's a new generation coming through your skipper there. Um, but many people on the internet and in the press want Maxie and Aaron Finch involved in the Red Bull stuff. That's the internet wants that. So, like, fuck, there must be a lot of WhatsApp threads for various teams and then secret <laughs> spin-off threads and stuff that you've got to be involved in. You wouldn't believe it. The, the amount of WhatsApp groups. Um, and you've got to be so careful. So, you, you know, when you're, like, typing something and then just before you hit send, you make sure that it's the right group. Like, yeah. you know, oh, Victoria yeah. side group spinners only or something like, yeah, <laughs> make sure make sure this isn't the sentence where I'm spraying the spinners for not getting a wicket or something like that. So, yeah. you can't write um, it. Uh, you've got to be careful, boys. Everything's everything's out there. Social media, you can't get away from it. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually texting um, Peter uh, Hatzigler before uh, mm. about you, but uh, that's actually <laughs> take that several times Pete beforehand. H. Peter, Peter H, exactly yeah. right. 
I mean, Pete, uh, but you've obviously been in, um, you know, in Australian dressing rooms during some pretty, um, uh, pretty tough times where the public has pissed it before, sort of bang for blood and that sort of thing. I mean, how do you think the Australian team would have been feeling at, at the end of day five? Just absolute despair, but also a bit of relief about, oh, I actually get to go and see my family now, you know, on Pat Cummins' farm. Or, mm. you know, is, is it sort of um, acceptance that, uh, you know, India are the rising superpower? Which one of those two is it? Oh, um, well, I think there's a, there was a fair bit of, um, like, thank God that summer's over. Like, it's, mm. it was tough, but it was a tough bubble life. And um, obviously, the, the boys have been under the pump, um, you know, right from the get-go. As soon as something was wrong, the entire public was against them, which was a bit of a massive shame because, you know, they're actually playing some pretty pretty good cricket and, 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 you know, some individual performances were, were pretty amazing. Um, and to see the, the public sort of go against um, the boys was, a, was disappointing. Um, whereas I feel like the focus probably should have been on how well the Indian cricket team actually played. Mm. Well, let's be honest, they've come over here, tough conditions. They've had the same bubble life. They've, they only had two blokes from the first team that from the first test that played in the last test. Yeah. And they still yeah. managed to beat Australia at the Gabba. Like, that shows how good they are, the depth of cricket that they've got. They've got this amazing young um, young group coming through. Um, yeah, so to see see the public and see the the what they were writing um, or what I was being told that they were writing in the papers and stuff was, yeah, was shit, really. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, you were ready. Um, it, it's funny you say that, you know, as, as, a, as a guy who's played in the middle order for Australia in the test team, your average thirty eight point nine, so we'll make that forty. Yeah, yeah uh, definitely. Like, Always round up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, it must be a part of you just with with the, with the team kind of screaming out for a middle order bat, or 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 at least there being an opportunity for one. It must be it must be frustrating to not have the opportunity at that point to stick your hand up, you know, and to go mm. it, it, by weight of runs. I mean, uh, and to go, you know, yeah. pick me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was. That was a bit frustrating. I mean, we only, as you know, Victoria in the Shield in the Shield season, I only got to play um, two games, one of which the entire middle order sat down for pretty much the entire game um, because Puck and Harry were were a bit uh, selfish there and decided to score the runs themselves. So yeah. that leaves you that leaves you one game to try and score some runs. And um, also felt for uh, Nick Madison, who's been smacking him in the nets. And uh, any warm up game we had, he was. You know, he made 100 at, um, you know, when we played an intra club game. Uh, didn't get the opportunity again to push to push his case. And he's a guy that's played test cricket and he's probably ready to go now more though, more so than he was uh, before. Um, but yeah, it was just just through this year and this weird year, we don't get the opportunity to do it. It's it's one of the great, yeah. isn't it, where there's this there's this moment where you turn up to the you turn up to the ground, you're having a bat first, and you think, mm, don't want to get in too early. New ball might nip around a bit, but in the context of like Park 25 runs, where every bloke scoring hundreds, Josh Inglis is going back to back, you know, Pukowski's on 200. And that opening partnership, I imagine you're batting, you're you're waiting to bat, and the score's on 450 or whatever you're on. You thought, oh, I wouldn't mind having a stick here, boys. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'd normally been batting four for Victoria, um, but saw the wickets and saw what was happening. So I was like, no, 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 Puck, you can go up. I'll bat three. So I was like, oh, at least, <laughs> at least like shine should be off, but yeah. I still have a long, long enough time to bat and make some runs. Um, but that plan just didn't work, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> just, just broader than the cricket, Pete. Like, the, you know, there's been a lot of talk about your lid, you know, being different, your salad, if you will, depending on where you, you know, your dialect. Sure. Um, yeah you know, your technique being different. I know Marcus Thornis um, spoke the other day about, you know, showing public affection to his friends. Some people think that's rare. Like mm. it seems to me like a lot of blokes are really comfortable in their own skin as human beings uh, in cricket these days. I just wondered if that worried you in terms of chances of selection. <laughs> as in what, like I don't have a good enough rig to get selected. Is that? Oh, just, you know, it looks, it looks, I'm, using- I'm not used to it. You know, I'm not draping myself in the Aussie flag with a short back and sides, you know, diggers stuff, like just keeping it really on the yep. straight and narrow. Does, mm-hmm. does that, does that concern you? Um, yeah, I guess, you know, you don't, you, you don't want to be too weird or too rare because if you are, then mate, you know, might, yeah, it might hurt your chances at selection. Um, so Stoin's, Stoin's rare. He has that, he has that side of him, but he also has a friends so and he's a nice person. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, yeah, I, I feel like I was a nice person, but maybe I just had to do something different with the hair. So I thought yeah. maybe that might that might get me noticed and therefore 
selected. Ah, uh, good point. Um, but no, it, it wasn't to be. But the, I've I've had some good good feedback. Most most positive. Some negative. Well, most of the time, when I've seen it on TV, it's obviously tied back. But now I look at it, now you're relaxed, uh, you know, in, the, mm. in your confines. And there's a bit of um, sort of Bernard Fanning about it. There's a bit of sort of 90s grunge <laughs> era. Is that what, like, you know, is that yeah. 90s Australian sort of rock? Hell uh, almost. Yeah. Is, are you going for that yeah. or is it just a, a nice offshoot? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. He's, he's not a bad looking rooster. I can't, I can't sing like him. Um, I've done karaoke once or twice and... Poor people that had to listen to that. Um, no, I apologise, but yeah, it, it was one laziness from last year with the with the uh, with the hair. Um, you know, hairdressers being closed, um, and there was no way I was letting my wife touch my hair either um, yeah. with, with the clippers. So I was like, yeah, let's just go it out, see what the hell happens, and loving uh, loving being able to get a ponytail go. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, last last one for me, Pete. I mean. Um, you're obviously playing last time Australia went to South Africa in a, in a fairly benign series where nothing happened. Um, you, reckon, you reckon the boys are pretty keen to get back there? Yeah, I reckon they're gonna uh, they're gonna love it, mate. They'll be um, <laughs> it, well, at least there probably won't be a crowd, so at least yeah, 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 that's good. At least they're not gonna cop too much shit. But um, yeah, I can imagine there'll be a few scars there, but uh, the boys will be fine. They'll they'll suck it up and just get the job done. Yeah, I see. You're going to go down the path there of having a joke and then you're like, nah, they've got to do yeah. it. Then that's fair enough. They're going to win 3-0. Bring it back, yeah. That's going to win 3-0. <laughs> um, Pete, thanks so much for joining us at Short Notice. I'm sure you enjoyed that and that's what you needed with your day. Um, and all, all, all the best for uh, with Hobart and the rest of the summer and hopefully get out of the, the, the bubble and get a bit of a break as well. Uh, cheers, boys. Absolutely loved it. Wonderful to speak to close personal friend Pete Hanscom. And of course, Pez, all of this exists because of our dear, dear friends at Budgie Smuggler who have all of your accessories, wants and needs covered for your pandemic life that will continue on for perhaps maybe 10, 15 years. Who knows? A couple of variants going, going around. Anytime, yeah. anytime you get a vaccine, a couple more drops in the uh, sewage. Boop, 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 boop. Who's putting those drops in, mate? Uh, well, mate, I don't want to put in the allegations, but I want to say Tim Payne. Indeed. Pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, during pandemic, Budgie Smuggler has you covered. Face masks, the yep. obvious one. You want to look good with your face masks these days. Great time of year for Budgie Smuggler to cover into the the series, the season of the face masks, but also the crossover between Australian summers, you know, swimwear, yeah. heading into maybe the European summers coming around the corner. Yeah. Maybe br- brighter days are ahead. I did say it's snowing quite heavily in London, though, the other day, which every single cunt online just posted a little Insta story. <laughs> <laughs> And how dare they use their own platforms in whichever way they choose? Even if it is, even if it is too cold, you're going to see a lot of your English brev- brethren playing in India, and you're going to see some buddy smugglers shining through those see-through white ben pants. Stoke smuggles, you, you doesn't don't, he? You don't need to send them to us. We see it, but if it's a good shot, send it to us. We'll send it to us. It yeah, and, and it deliver us. some value to the sponsors. <laughs> That's how the sausage is made. Indeed. Well, we thank very much, uh, Budgie Smuggler. We're, I mean, it just feels like we're heading towards the end of something here, Pez. As the as now the tests are over, mm. late start, but you're heading into sort of February times. Mm. Yeah, I know. All of this exists though because of budget. Mm. Budget smuggler don't quit, regardless of what sun is rising and what sun is setting on mm. Australian unbridled dominance mm. or otherwise. Now that's not to be confused with the Sunrisers Hyderabad, who you can probably get some you actually can. design spons- uh, you smugglers. Can. Yeah, you can. for Sunrisers Hyderabad if that's your team. Now if you <laughs> if you use the code Champ at checkout, you get free shipping. That is. Budgie smuggler. Smuggler. Dot com. And they're back. Manscaped. Yo! Here you guys. Let me read something to you. Bye. This was sent this was sent to us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got you got spotted. You got, you got spotted. <laughs> yeah, now. Speaking of boys. Um I was talking to my neighbor the other day, uh, just sat outside a coffee shop. Met him before, but haven't really got talking. We got we got talking uh, like 15, 20 minutes. And uh, he was just asking, like, what I do. And I was like, oh, don't ask too many questions. Um, yeah, and nice uh, answer. <laughs> yeah, mate. I said, shut the fuck up. Stay in your lane. And just address me as sir. Uh, he's actually a pro- uh, former professional footy player. He played Super League in, uh, in the UK. Okay. Yeah. A nice, really nice guy. And uh, anyway, there was a cyclist who just drove past in full, in full, uh, hello, Daisy, in full, um, in full lycra, full, full get up, uh, who just, <laughs> just cycled past while I was talking to my neighbor, getting the coffee. Boys! Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so you must have clocked you from a fair way back. Maybe. 
Yeah. My neighbor just like looked at him. He's like, "What the fuck's that about?" And I'm like, "Mate, I don't know." Do you know what he's talking about? Like, yeah. well, what did he say? I didn't actually catch that. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, actually, what he meant was it was a reference to uh, Brendan Julian. <laughs> uh, do you know him? Yeah, he's just a former cricket. Yeah. That, that he couldn't explain that in any less than five minutes. No, nah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And well, what does it you do? Ah, yeah. oh, mate, don't worry about it. If you do spot either of us, feel free to yell out, boys. At any point, <laughs> he goes. I think we can all agree dating during a <laughs> pandemic yeah. is competitive and tough. Yeah. Don't worry. There's optimism with Valentine's Day right around the corner. I want you to be prepared for this holiday by presenting the prettiest dong possible. Nice. That's why our sponsors, Manscaped, have created products that will make your V-Day date say, wow, great set of balls you have there. Now, if anyone ever said to me, wow. Has that happened? Great. No, not yet. Wow, great set of balls you got there. Great set of balls you got there. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, that, that story lives long in the memory, the, uh, the grinder threesome story. Yeah. Uh, now, hopefully, Manscaped was going on there. Yeah. Now that's, a, that, now, that's an environment where you could yell at boys and compliment someone's balls. Have you, been, of you. you been scaping? Uh, yeah, I have been. Yeah, of course, mate. Summer. Summer. Shower? Yeah. That's, yeah. Where, that's where it lives now. That's mine lives. Yeah. Mate, that reminds me. Now, I had an incident the other day. Here we go. Um, and uh, you know like how the, the thing with Manscaped, I'm not, I'm not reading anything. No, no, <laughs> I know. Just, yeah. I'm riffing here. Um, the thing is like no nicks and cuts. And you know, previously, if you're using like your razor for your face or whatever, like the old school way, if you're going too hard, it can be a fucking bloodbath. Ooh, it can, be, I know it can it. be a massacre. Now, I was being a little bit aggressive in my manscaping the other day. Oh, maybe, really? maybe like a like week, you, week you or were, two days were ago. Pressing the blade down too heavily on your skin? Yeah. Whilst, yeah. Because yeah. I, I was upside down. I was lying on my Pardon? back. On the <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. But I went in too hard, and like you know, when you press it and you feel like, hang on, it could be in trouble here. No nicks, no cuts, didn't happen. No blood, it, no it's blood. It's funny. Time. It's it, fucking. This thing is an absolute game changer. I've said it before. It's like it's it is. If you are of age and you're looking to present yourself to make your dong look good, or or be complimented by, hey, nice set of balls, you're an idiot if you don't have manscaped because it's a complete and revolutionizer. I, I was initially skittish about using manscaped with such force around my balls. Yeah. And genital region. Yeah. And uh, when I started using it in a dry setting, as in just in the bathroom, not mm. in the shower, in the I, I eventually, yes, <laughs> um, I, I eventually grew in confidence like you do when you just practice, practice, practice. <laughs> it's a 10,000 hour theory. Until I learned, because I was starting to listen, up. that you could actually do it in the shower as well, just as a little yeah, bit of a habit. Well, and I didn't trust that because you kind of charge it with batteries and stuff. It's also, it's, it's digitized as lights and stuff like Am I combining a blade, um, some kind of kind of electrical power or battery power and water yeah. around my penis? Yeah. I don't know if I am. And yet Depends what you're into. I took the first tentative steps. Yeah, some people might be into that. Mm. Sadomasochists. Yeah. But I took the first tentative steps. I followed the instructions. I trusted it. And all of a sudden, I'm a scaper in the shower. Yeah. I do that. Yeah. And it works really well for me. Yeah. Now, I... I used to toast. I used to do my toasting in the bathtub. I used to do not- Toastmasters in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> the structure is past, present, future. If you have to make a speech off the cuff, start with the past, <laughs> present, future. <laughs> is that uh, it? Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a code, isn't there? Oh, yeah. Well, you can. You, the best way to start is, is by getting the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0. So it's going to give you the lawnmower 3.0. That's the actual trimmer. There's all sorts of shit for your ears and your nose. You can get some ball wipes, <laughs> ball wipes with them as well. Um, what, what, does it, what does it say here about that? It says um, the crop mops, mm-hmm. ball wipes, will be clutched to keep in your wallet for this date because you will never know when the magic can happen. So is that to suggest that, say you're out on a date, and the person you're on a date with is feeling like it's time for some mm. sexual interplay, regardless of where we are, mm-hmm. right? Are you following me? I'm Always. just trying to get the words neutrally correct. Yeah. I think the suggestion here is that you pop off mm. for a second, get yeah. the ball wipes out, <laughs> crop mops, and you wipe your balls. Yeah. Well, you know how um, going, you know, when you go, if you go to the gym now, you have to like wipe down your bench after every use? Yeah. It's basically the same principle, but That's you go to the bathroom, you're doing spray. your dick. Yeah. Sorry, I got in the way of you saying dick there. <laughs> Get out of the way. <laughs> you always do that. 
The Perfect Package 3.0 will also come with a pair of Manscaped boxes that will keep your junk feeling fresh all day. Mm -hmm. Junk. It's time to upgrade to Manscaped's high-performance anti-chafing boxes, easily the comfiest boxes I've ever had. Um, so, yeah, it's a perfect package for your perfect package. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code TGC at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Hashtag ask TGC. Derek Rosen, dear TGC, after spending the last few days reading every post-mortem I could lay my eyes on after, about Australia's subpar test summer in the hope it would make... Sorry, it would take the emptiness away. I realised what I needed was to watch footage of historical underdogs top-dogging the cricketing world with fast bowling, body blows, swagger, and great accents. Mm -hmm. I dusted off my favourite cricket documentary, Fire in Babylon, from 2010, and was immediately transported to a better place. In this documentary, which I'm sure students of the game such as yourselves would be familiar with, oh, yes. the great West Indian players reminisce about their 1975 Australian tour and how they and how they were decimated by Lily and Tomo. The fear factor the players had facing truly terrifying fast bowling, which, if I am not mistaken, was with the back foot no ball rule and very little PPE, personal protective equipment, combined with racial epithets from the crowd, many of whom were shirtless back then in the pre-slip slop slap era and 1970s era sledging left an indelible mark on their psyche michael holding was quoted as saying he couldn't believe test cricket could be played like this the two this tour was the catalyst for the west indies to open a, open up a can of whip ass on the rest of the cricketing world for my entire childhood adolescence and early adulthood i recall hearing on tjc that once beta you can act alpha but never be alpha I'll say that again i recall hearing on the tjc that once beta, you can act alpha, but never be alpha. My two questions are, were these West Indian fast bowlers always alpha cells huh. that just needed activation by seeing Lily and Tomo, or <laughs> did their bone-shattering pace attack, transcend the grey cricketing pigeonholing? And has Michael Holding been on the show, and have you asked him about his grey cricket experiences vis-a-vis -vis his shock at the level of sledging in Australia versus Jamaica? Really loving the podcast as I did the books. Derek. Cheers, Derek. Uh, we invited Michael Holding onto the podcast a few months ago. He was very kind in his replies. Uh, he just said his... Who is this? Um, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's usually the best of it from people. Yeah. But oh, he said he's, um, he's not making appearances. He's writing a book about his experiences of racism and he's just going to wait till that book comes out oh, and yeah. start talking. So right. hopefully we get a chance to talk to him there. Uh, I, I guess, yeah, like the, the question is about were were these West Indian bowlers initially beta as a result of their experiences with Tomo and Lily and then became alpha or were they just faking the alpha? Well, no, they were never beta, no. these West Indian bowlers. Mm. And you're right to point to alpha, uh, to, to cell activation. Um, he's right. They are alpha cells. You know, the cell activation can lead to differentiation of certain cells into more mature cells that exhibit different structural and functional form. Functional form. And yeah. obviously the experience of Lily and Thompson was that... Um, uh, was that differentiation yeah. moment for them? Yeah, obviously we've yeah. talked about that at that's length what I was off say. air. Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> so I, don't like, I don't like when you bring, uh, when you bring that onto the show, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So Sacred. there's, I mean, and I, I'm not sure that the premise that we've said, like once beta, you can act alpha but never be alpha. Like you know, I don't know. I mean, Is I, that I, true? I don't remember saying that. I'm not sure that's exactly how we'll put it. It's like yeah, if you are a beater. Right. But these West Indians were never initially beaters. You could tell that. You play for West Indies mate, in that period. Mate. And Fire in Babylon is like, it's about how the West Indies until that point with like Leary Constantine and Gary Sobers and stuff like that had some amazing players. Garfield Sobers, dad says, is the best cricketer he's ever seen. Yeah. Right? Like, but it was all a bit. They, they called it Calypso cricket. Really talented, but often couldn't get results. And they went, yeah. and then they had Lillian Thompson. They said, "Enough's a fuck enough." Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this was like um, back foot no ball rule shit as well. You yeah. know, like you can get that front dog right over the popping crease yeah. if you can keep your back foot behind. Uh, and then they just started destroying everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, look, it's just a long way of saying I, I think they have always been alphaed and they hey, uh, alphas and they show what, themselves thus. At what point in the history of Michael Holding's life has he never been the alpha? Like his nickname was Whispering Death. Like if there's a guy who played like third grade and he just bowls like stump to stump, maybe some in-swingers with a keep up to the stumps, and if he was calling himself, mate, everyone calls him Whispering Death, mate, you can get the fuck in the bin. You're a beater. Mm. Don't ever look at me. Don't ever look at me. Get out of the fucking team song. When we win the games, you sit outside the dressing rooms or in the toilets. Okay. 
I'm Michael struggling. Holding is fucking pushing off from the sight screen, whispering death because it's just this fluid motion. You could set your clock to his action, and then it's just fucking bam. That's pace. That's alpha. I'm struggling to think of a figure in cricket who is alive at the moment who could alpha Michael Holding. Even dead. Brendan Julian. You think? <laughs> WG Grace. Could he alpha Michael Holding? Probably not. I don't think I don't think um WJ Grace was an alpha. That's a big call. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't dice well, I think that this could be a live show topic about about uh WG Grace. WG Grace was a beta. I'm not saying he was beta. Oh. I'm just not convinced that he was an alpha. I think he was a bit of a sook. He got bold and put the stumps back on. No, they've come here to watch me bat. Is that alpha? Or is it kind of dumb? His tombstone says doctor and cricketer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but who hasn't got that? Yeah. That's like the, the identity thing for him, for WG Grace. Mm. Yeah. Good off the pads. There's some footage of that. <laughs> Isn't that funny when you watch footage of WG Grace, you expect him to be like, this is going to be like worse than fifth grade. And it's actually pretty good. Yeah. I, I, I'm i always watching that with old footage. I, I was looking up the back foot no ball this morning, as is my want. Yeah. And... Uh, there was some English bowlers, but it was like Larwood and Verity and shit yeah. bowling when um, Bradman was playing. And I've seen how the back foot no ball rule worked. If you keep your back foot behind the back crease, you can put your front foot wherever you want. So they're bowling fucking they, – they can get themselves ahead a good, like, couple of inches ahead of the front crease. Mm -hmm. And, like, in order to bowl with your back foot that far back, you have to have some good force and pace behind you. Yeah, like, yeah. I wouldn't be able to achieve that with my legs or anything like that. And actually it looked quite quick. And that's, this is an that's, issue because, that's because we're watching footage from like, you know, that era. It's just like every, just everything in fast forward. Talk of or well, everything in fast forward. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people wonder about the, the umpires are shit. They're mm. not shit. It's just Lyle would bowl 115 Ks an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's just harder now. Mate, you know we talk we talk now about how hard umpiring must be where you're looking at the front hey, foot, you're looking at the front foot no bowling, you look up, impossible. is there a noise? What about looking at the back foot? You stand there, you look at the back foot, <laughs> he's bowled it. Now because Lyle would just, just bowl up. Yeah. He used to bowl. He used He'd to toss up, it up. His upward trajectory. Oh, right. yeah. He's yeah. give it some air. He's give it some air. Yeah. Then the bounce. About 110, 115 on a good day down breeze. Um, but that must be fucking impossible if you're in a trench coat. You know, it's the middle of winter in the UK. Uncovered pitches. You're looking at the back foot no ball back here. Then you're like, as you hit it, I don't know. I didn't catch it. I'm looking at the fucking back foot back here. I'm a foot fetishist. Could you offer Bradman? <laughs> Is it, it, did he score? Yeah. On religious levels. Any level. Any level you could offer him. Not cricket level. Do you just think that average just just permits you to permits you dominance over everybody? Like, because if Michael mm. Holding has a go at Bradman's, like, just could say could say whatever he likes. Mm. Say whatever he likes. I, d I don't know. Just the runs. Well, it's interesting to, because, yeah. like, look at Warren. Bill O'Reilly out for him, a lot feisty uh, Republican. Yeah, I just love. I mean, people obviously heard in the mashup um, that we've had in the past about Ian Chapel talking about mm. uh, not many people. <laughs> Oh, maybe I like Bradman. Mm. Well, good stick, though. Oh, really good stick. <laughs> Simon K writes in, Hey, guys. Is this the right question? Yeah. Uh, hey, guys. Another After another failure of England's openers against spin, Peterson tweeted a message that was sent to him by Rahul Dravid with some advice about playing spin in Asia. A former player passing on some friendly advice from a legend of the game that led him to becoming an England great. That sounds nice. Until you read the first word, Champ, which was champ, as you yep. heard of comments. Yep. This brings up so many – so so for background, Rahul Dravid addressed Kevin Peterson as champ. Peterson published this, yep. published the letter, and a lot of people focused in on the fact that Rahul Dravid addressed Kevin Peterson as champ. This was on the back of um, Sibley. Yeah. And the England openers struggling against spin in Sri Lanka. That's it. This brings up so many questions that only two blokes making a podcast about playing cricket at the grade level <laughs> can answer. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Who is doing the champing here, KP or the original author of the message, Dravid? Well, fuck, it's, it's yeah, trickle-down yeah. economics. Um, do we take into account that Dravid is one of the nicest guys in cricket and that Peterson is Peterson? Is Dravid such a big dog that he gets someone else to do his champing for him? Is Joe Root good again? Does Dravid's original champing of Peterson, along with Rahane's offering of Lion, show that India have always been daddy dick mm -hmm. and Australia are the prepubescent that has only just seen it? Cheers. Simon hmm. K, Southampton, UK. You don't need to tell us where you're from. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, though. Um, Australia, 
are not the prepubescent that has only just seen it, I don't think. Uh, I think take, Simon wants them to be. Yeah. And yeah. now, without doubt, India are the daddy dick. They have not always been the dad dick. It's just dad dick. Daddy, they, daddy. they are now. We don't have a daddy dick. To just dad dick. India now a dad dick. Australia have been dad dick. West Indies have been dad dick. Have England ever been dad dick? Maybe when they took home the ashes and they refused to give them back. During their imperial era, I think they carried on like dad dicks, yeah. I think, I think Sri Lanka, and like when they won the 96 World Cup, had some dad dick about them. Let me carry them because they thought they were dad dicks during that imperial era, man. Aravinda de Silva. Yeah, like, yeah. India, I mean, Sacra. every, like, the, the, every country, oh, sorry. There's always one dad dick country, and at the moment it's India. Yeah. It doesn't mean that other teams can't have dad dicks within them. But India is dad dick. In this instance, Dravid has champed Peterson. I don't know how I don't know how Peterson in any way has champed anyone. He posted it unaware that he had been champed. Or not putting it through the Australian Great Cricket lens. The, the way I would explain that for the like the black hat on that is yes, like Dravid's champed Peterson enormously and it's a beautiful champing because we know Rahul Dravid is a wise, peaceful ornament to the game. He can be the wall, he can score um, trillions of runs and also speak with great like statesmanship and gravitas about the game at the Bradman oration and things like that. I mean, he's, he's unimpeachable Dravid and this is, be peached. and this, th- that's right. And this is what we're learning about India alphering, India's style of alphering mm. and India's dad dickery mm. generally. It's subtle. It's subtle and, and it's, it's under the guise of being classy. Mm-hmm. So Ajinkya Rahane, mm. the modern dad dick mm-hmm. of, of modern cricket. Yep. With the, with the way he presented that shirt to Lion, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay? Yeah. He's an ornament to you yeah. to remember the worst day of your freaking <laughs> career. Signed by um, all of us. Signed by all of us. Classy touch. And Ravi Ashwin's wife. Yes, yes. <laughs> so that's how they. That's how Jinx does it. Yeah. How does Dravid, how does Dravid do it to Peterson? Well, firstly, Dravid opens that letter by saying, a disclaimer, yeah. I've never actually played against these played, coats. Yeah, because Peterson's asking about mm. um, playing against the spinners of Bangladesh, yeah. which one of them is Shakib Al Hassan, the other one's Abdul Razak, I think it is. Um, and yeah, so Dravid says, champ, first of all, never played against these two, but uh, here's a four-page yeah. letter about how I did it. How I play spin. So Dravid's got heaps of levels because Dravid yeah. and Peterson played together in the IPL. They played two years together for, don't know, I'm sure someone on YouTube is probably going to tell me. Yeah. Um, and uh, and also Dravid's been uh, sort of been credited with uh, bringing up this Australia, uh, this Australia, this this Indian uh, generation of young talent. He's sort of, have you seen this? He's been credited with the the sort of the, the coming through of Shubman Gill and Washington Sundar and Natarajan. Mm. Mm. So he's got some fucking levels, Dravid, and he's got credits in the bank, and he's tramping, and he's champing Kevin Peterson. So he's subtly champed Kevin Peterson. Now, where where it may be argued that Peterson champs others is the like. Um, is no one in the England team is requesting um, public advice on how to play spinners. Hmm. But what Kevin Peterson will do is reach into his private collection of letters to publicly <laughs> publish inf- like advice yeah. from the ornament to the game. Yeah. But he doesn't realise, unwittingly, he's just published that he's been champed without realising it yes. by draft. So that's why I say it's trickle-down economics. You know, oh, I see, yes. And it's just trickling down to us and we're all being champed at yes, all times. indeed. Right? Indeed. But uh, hmm. so that's my read. On <laughs> it's just a fucking letter from one bloke to another. <laughs> Same as the Rahana, Rahana giving a shirt to Lion. Yeah, it's just, it's a just shirt. a really nice gesture. Yeah, we don't know how to interpret it because we don't do things like that. Because we're scared. We don't do that thing When like we that. win yeah. series, we get fucking big buildings of us holding up four fingers and like an apparatus. And Mate, it's all there. Remember when Kale Rahul, when, when Cameron Green came to the wicket for the for his first ODI it's game? It's all there. Kale Rahul said to Chris Green, go well, young fella. Ask mm. him if he's nervous. Just mm. say, go well. Good mm. luck. What, what the f- what, what are you doing here? What are you, you really want here? him to be Chris Green, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Can't stop thinking about Chris Green. Fair enough. Eyes. The eyes on it. Pez, you want to do one more? Yeah, go go, go on then. Okay, thank you for that permission. As my computer turns on. Anon! Dear TDC, I was listening to the iPoke story the other day, which was brilliant, and chuckling over the TDC motif of the father and wondering whether any of this shit really happens in real life. And then I had what I can only describe as a PTSD flashback to oh. something that I've tried to bury for my whole adult life. Now I desperately need your help. <laughs> Fuck desperately is a great word. Yeah. 
De- I desperately need your help. When I was 13, I was a kid at a very old-fashioned boarding school in the UK. I was a budding leg spinner and was captain of the school team. There were only 100 people at the school, so in reality, I was the least shit. I had been, <laughs> I had been initiated in the dark arts of leg spin by my father, who could, who could politely describe who could be politely described as an eccentric, but who is in fact absolutely mad. He bowled comically slow and looping leg spin and would turn out for a Sunday team where he would routinely end up with figures of something like four for 145, losing his side of the game but basking in the glory of having four batsmen caught it long on, going for a third six in, the row, third six in a row. This is a man who had a skin lesion removed one summer but told everyone that the scar was from an operation to remove a tendon so that he could get the flipper out more easily. <laughs> Hopefully get the idea. <laughs> anyway, back to this school which held an annual sons v. fathers match. But because it is a strange old-fashioned school, it's taken pretty seriously. An all-day game with lunch and tea and all the rest of the school and other parents watching. Fuck. My dad's the captain of his team and he is taking this game fucking seriously. He's found out, th- uh, he's found out that one of the slightly younger dads bowls quite quickly and it gives him full license to go after these 13-year-olds with men, actual grown men, all around the bat. A few overs later, he brings himself on to bowl and immediately gets a wicket with a kid running halfway down the pitch to one of his grenades, completely missing it and getting stumped by eight yards. And now in, I'm now in, and he's bowling. Feeling a bit tense, I make a shit joke to the non-striker on the way out that I can still remember. So what's this guy bowling? And then I take guard. First ball comes out of his hand and sails up into the air. I have about 10 seconds to decide on a shot. It starts on a round leg stump, so I prod my foot out down the line of leg stump and then the fucking thing starts to drift further down the leg side. I can't move my leg again, so I, <laughs> <laughs> so I decide to just aim a half-hearted leg glance at it, confident that it won't turn back far enough to cause any issues. As it goes behind my pad, it turns back and catches and clashes into my leg stump. I can't believe it. There are about 200 people watching and I've got out first ball to my 55-year-old father who struggles to project the ball from one end of the pitch to the other. There's an awkward hush amongst the other parents. The keeper says bad luck. I think one of the fielders even questions whether you can be out first ball in this game, which only makes things worse. I'm in a bit of a daze, but I look up to see my dad standing in the middle of the pitch with his hands up above his head, just roaring to himself. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he had a beard at the time and the best image I can think of for the comparison is the QAnon shaman in the capital with the furry hat <laughs> he does this for a while and I have to walk off past him he doesn't say anything to me the ultimate unspoken champing fuck that's brutal Anyway, now that I've remembered this suppressed nightmare, what the fuck do I do about it? Even writing this has brought on cold sweats I can't concentrate on anything anymore and I don't know how to move on with my life as you basically cause this memory to resurface, please help. Anon, not QAnon. Yeah. Oh, this this jarred me, this story. Um, Any bold this concerned said. me. Yeah. Fuck. I mean, these father-son matches need to be looked at. <laughs> <laughs> they're dangerous. Yeah, they, they are. They need to be looked at by school psychologists. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Because, I mean... Just given what we've explored throughout through the years on this show and the amount of corris- sheer amount of correspondence we've had re- reacting to father issues, I mean, what a frightening experience, you know, father v son matches, and how how damaging can they be you know, in terms of your memory? Something to think about on a serious <coughs> level. Now, father's been presented as an eccentric. That's all fine. Spinners are, and I I like the story about him having a skin lesion removed and saying I just need to get the flipper out yeah, better. That's funny, yeah. and he can say the son follows in the footsteps. That's quite funny walking out to bat and saying, "What's well, this guy bowl?" Yeah. At his dad's, he yeah. follows in his footsteps a little yeah. bit. There, he's aware, self aware. Yeah, he's thirteen. Now he sort of projects. He sort of explains that his dad is pretty much a, 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 a shit bowler. He tosses it up absolute fucking, um, yeah. you know, like nude nuts. Yeah. But he's fucking bowling around his legs. Yeah. Okay? It's impossible to do that without work on the ball. Yeah. It really, it really is. It's a good ball. If and if you've like you've moved your leg, you can't move it anymore and you offer a half hearted leg glance, you're, it's obviously not so slow that you're able to readjust. So yeah. it's a good delivery. And it also has to be on turf wicket, because it can't be mm. an astro. Yeah. Because otherwise it would just bounce over the top of the stuff. That's that's right. That's right. So it's gotta be turf. Yeah. 
I mean, if it is Astro, it's a it, oh well, because look, yeah, it can happen. Um, <laughs> if it, it is if it is Astro, it, the ball's pitched very close to the stumps, and so if you've missed a full toss, yeah, or uh, halfway uh, down, yeah, in which oh, you, well, you deserve to be humiliated. Yeah. Anyway, it's a it's a it's a big it's a rich school, so we're going to say it's turf. It's probably a better fucking wicket than first class cricket. Yeah, it's lords, but, um, yeah. <laughs> it's a nurse and nursery crowd, the lords. <laughs> um, so the thing that sort of struck me was how your dad got your way out, roaring, admittedly, but didn't say anything or didn't give you any emotion. And I just wondered, maybe as a father that myself, like, yeah. I don't know how you describe this this moment, but like he he has offered you. But he's also exposed his own progeny's beatedom, and that would result in a could result in an implosion because no oh, father yeah. wants their wants to learn their son is a beater in front of the others, yeah. and we all know that, don't yeah, we? we? Like, we, we but, all know that, but yeah. if you're the one who exposes it, yeah. and you've got Alfred, the son, you've Alfred your son. Like it's literally that's the moment the father and the son competes, and the father has bested the son. Now, as a father, I can only imagine it would be very um, hard to carry those two ideas at the same time. Right, 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 right. Which is probably why he said nothing. This, this, this jokester, this um, court mm. jester man who's got a fucking quip for everything, mm. bowls his son around his legs, and he's just suddenly silenced himself. Yeah, his his life in a way <laughs> is fucking over. He's vexed. Yeah, yeah. He's just learning that he has become the alpha. It's a great point. When you think about these these father son games, yes, what and I do. What son is organising that? It's just a chance for the fucking dads to turn up in a you know convertible in their yeah. midlife crisis and show yeah. I've still got it. Yeah, and I can swing still, their dicks still, around with each I other. I can still best these young men. Yeah, I'm still the alpha. I've still got years left in my life. I can grow my hair back if I just use this one weird trick. Yeah, my erection can be as strong as ever. I'm gonna bowl my son around in my legs. Yeah. Fuck, now I've humiliated him publicly. What have I done to myself? What's this done to my psyche? If you, you These could, games are fucked. They're fucked. They're fucked. <laughs> I think you can take some solace. Um, yeah. Anon. You can take some solace from the fact that he was roaring. You know, if you were a terrible cricketer and he'd properly humiliated you. Yeah. Like. That's on you. <laughs> <laughs> head back to the nets. You fucking embarrassment. <laughs> no. He's only going to be roaring because he, you know, by extension thinks you're a decent enough player, you know. Sure, so that's sure. there's a backhanded compliment sure, to it. Sure, sure, But otherwise I'm just a bit off about father-son matches altogether. Right. There's too much dan- danger there for whatever you get out of it. If you've got a good experience of a father-son match, I'm not, I'm not sure I really want to know it because we'll just break it down and we'll tell you well, how you're wrong. If can, can we keep going? If you're a dad, right, don't you like if you what sort of what are you after with a father son match? Yeah. If you're after the basic bitch stuff of like I'm gonna fucking make my son look like a bitch, I'm gonna dominate him, yeah, or whatever, you're gonna be looked down upon. You're a fucking idiot. You're and you are like among adults, especially at private school and stuff. Really, you're gonna destroy unless your son is like some fucking king in make in waiting, and mm-hmm. you actually just knock him down a peg for your own enjoyment. It might be. It doesn't sound like it. it could be King it doesn't George. Sound like he can't get the ball the other end. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you think, if you, like, how do you play I, it as a dad? Like, isn't the best way to do the false humility is what I'm saying? Like, isn't the best way to like, your son destroys you, you know, you still take him home in the convertible or your, your you know, your, SUV, your luxury SUV, but if you will. In these, in these private school fixtures of which I've never been part of, mm. like the father-son game. Oh, no, mm. I did play a father-son game once. Mm. I've, I've repressed it though. I don't really remember what happened in it. Well, fuck, like something must have fucking happened. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we've had a whole chat about father-son yeah. matches and it's just occurred to yeah. you you had one. Fuck, okay, bring bring the doll in. Yeah. Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the the way the flex, though, if between fathers surely is like, well, um, my uh, my bonus came in this month, and uh, you know it's, like, it's probably that kind of gear. I don't I, because I, I think that the, the father going into this game thinks he wants something, and that's to show up his son that he is the alpha. But once that occurs, he must have this sinking feeling. It's like you know you ever watch porn, then like you finish, and you're like, what the fuck was I just watching just then? Same feeling, massive letdown. What the fuck was I just watching? Just then? <laughs> oh, yeah. no, oh no! Yeah. Oh no! Yeah. It's exactly the same as that, mate. 
Yeah, I'm just trying to think the the ideal result for the father. It's kind of like you actually probably want your progeny to dominate other fathers, don't you? That'd be the way to do it. And then when you decide that his time is up, you then end it. <laughs> That's probably the way to do it. And then some father wants to have a coffee with you in the hope of getting a job where you're the manager. If that's exactly it. Now, if you were if you were playing that game, would you want to score runs against your dad in front of other people? Mate, fucking oath. I played with my dad <laughs> once on the same side. It was a uh, like a um, it was a uh, like a barristers v um, union guys. Dad was a workers comp uh-huh. barrister, and yeah. and then that oh, I got subbed in 13, 14, player of promise. Yeah. And at the time, I had no – it was probably a special moment for my dad. Sure. But I was such an animal for cricket. All I wanted to do was dominate everything. Yeah. Well, I just went out there and just smashed blokes around that like um, – I don't mean this to uh, – this actually sounds bad for me. Blokes are probably just trying to enjoy the day and whatever. I was, I was single-mindedly focused on just – Destroying attacks. I didn't care who was in the way. I wanted Fuck. the. I wanted to bat. I wanted ruthless. the ball. Yeah, no, that that was my peak though. Obviously, it was a thirteen-year-old peak. But sure, like, sure, sure. I wanted the bat. I wanted the ball. That was it. There was no romance for me. I had oh. no other conception other than like all I want to do is score heaps of runs and for my dad to love me. <laughs> now that guy. I made thirty-one not out. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Dad? And I never, I never got that hug. <laughs> We're not getting macros. You can blame my son. Uh, thanks for Pete Hansen coming on the show. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for listening. See you guys on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash great cricket on TDC, hashtag RCG, Friday's episode 25. See you guys next week.